Il-Medinit kelmu dwar l-imbejjet tal-istil Rosette iġa t-kellimna ħafna fu l-emba ta' t-tip Grenash il-li t-intuza ħafna biex sir il-Rose anke s-sirrah jintuza u t-intuza u koll l-emba maltija ġellowza biex sir dan it-tip ta' mbit miej bil-hermitiġ esperienza kbira fil-qasam tal-imbit f-Malta bil-first of all, we talk about Rose Wines Rose Wine is a party wine, is a wine to have fun with it is not associated with uh, dinner. Why is it? Well, it's true and it's a shame because it really is a wine that goes very, very well with food. It's a, it's a real kind of middle of the road wine. You know, there are times when a white wine doesn't quite work, a red wine doesn't quite work, and rosé is perfect, especially with the sort of climate we have where, you know, you want something cold and maybe you want something a little bit heavier than a, ro a white wine. Uh, rosé wine's perfect. So perfect with what? Um, it's great with a lot of things, especially, well actually it goes, I know this is a bit strange, but it goes really well with pink food. So, <laughs> it, and that's, it doesn't just look nice together, they really taste well. I mean, it goes really well with things like um, shellfish platters, uh, prawn cocktails, uh, these sort of dishes, summer salmon. salads, salmon, they go very well. Maybe not smoked salmon, but the marinated salmon, where you don't have the smokiness. Um, it goes perfectly well together. It's something you can chill down very, you know, uh, it, it goes really, really well. And the first wine we're tasting today is, uh, this wine is a still wine, yeah. and it's made up of the Grenache and the Geloza. Exactly. Well, of course, you know, blending, blending a, a, an international variety like Grenache, with, which, it, which in itself is a great rosé wine maker. I mean, in, in, uh, in Provence, for example, or in Spain, a lot of the rosé wines are made with Grenache. Um, so it's a great rosé winemaker. Um, and but when you blend it with something like a Geloza, which is equally a good rosé winemaker, uh, it doesn't really have the Geloza doesn't really have the power and the strength to make red wines. But it makes fantastic rosé wines. You have a wonderful, unique wine, of course, because Geloza is only grown in Malta. So as soon as you put 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50%, it becomes a unique wine to Malta, and it works very well with the Grenache. They're very compatible together. So let's taste it. Okay. This is a medium dry wine. Yes. Okay. Um, which, to be honest, most ro most rose rosé wine drinkers like that just just that hint of sweetness. Um, it, it, it sets it apart from dry white wines with high acidity and from red wines. Does it go? Um, is it paired well with uh, some peppery food, like yeah. like the spina, for example? Yeah, it will because what you have. Um, with that little, what happens is, when you have a wine that has a little bit of sweetness, the mouthfeel changes, okay? So the mouthfeel becomes different and it feels much softer and fuller, okay? If this were dry, it wouldn't be so, wouldn't have the length, okay? And it wouldn't have that warmth. And that, that slightly, uh, that, that depth of flavor will combat the pepperiness of the jubaina. It'll work quite well, yes. You have to be careful. If the jubain has been soaked in oil, vinegar, something like that, it probably won't work. Um, but if it's um, you know one of the type that hasn't been, it'll work very well indeed. So it's a nice wine, one to relax with. But the Gelosa makes also uh, frizzante wine, the one which we are going to taste now, Bill. Yes, absolutely, and it really is one of the best rosé wine grapes in the world. So let's try it. Okay, so what we have here is a, a Gelosa, but with uh -huh. frizzanti, semi-sparkling, 100% frizz, uh, Gelosa, okay, again. It's still, I think, it's dry. No. no, this is just medium dry. Medium dry, just it's medium a medium dry, dry wine. Yeah, yeah demi-sec. Very soft bubbles. Yeah, 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 no, no, it's a very easy drinking wine. Again, because it's semi-sparkling and not fully sparkling. Um, it's, it, it can be drunk with a lot of foods. Sparkling wines and food are not great partners a lot of the time. Yeah, it's, it's more of an aperitif wine. Yes, more of an aperitif. Seven-ish, seven o'clock wine. <laughs> but actually this goes very well with some, some desserts. Yes? Yeah, especially strawberries. Any, anything with strawberries and ice cream, perfect. Very, very good. In fact, a frozen strawberry dropped in there is quite nice. Bill, is this the right glass to serve uh, a sparkling wine in? 
No, no, of course not, no. Ideally, you serve this in a nice, elegant flute. Um, that way, uh, the, 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 the rise of the, the, the sparkle is better. Um, you get a nice beat, and it's much more elegant, and it, it's, it's a perfect for... So a, just for the, for the sake of the bubbles? Yeah, for the sake of the bubbles. Also, it's, it's just a nice, elegant way to serve this wine. Um, it just tastes better from a nice, elegant flute, you know, as all sparkling wines do, of course. <laughs>